Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending February the 18th, 2022. The Russia-Ukraine uh, story has dominated the news all week and that's kept the market suppressed. What we're at in the S&P is a, uh, a critical point. Uh, if we break below, uh, you've got to watch around that 4300, 4250 level. Uh, if we break below that, uh, then uh, I think that we're in for a protracted uh, decrease. Okay, it pulled down the S&P 500. Likewise, the uh, the Nasdaq. Uh, you know, we're we're still holding that magical. Uh, uh, as long as we can drift above that 13,000 level, seems to be holding. Uh, if we break down below that, then uh, then you know, time to go uh, out of that market. Uh, small and mid caps are still doing okay. The Russell uh, 1000 is. Um, at a critical uh, level that's indicating uh, you're getting into uh, a bearish uh, uh, drawdown out there and so probably time to exit those trades as uh, uh, the the Russell 2000 small mid caps are are kind of drifting sideways that's where the rotation has been and that's what uh, that's what we've seen uh, right now so that's the uh, salvation that we have moving forward uh, so far they're holding in range we just have to see what next week brings, but uh, be prepared uh, to be sitting in cash or uh, or or you know riding out the storm in a, in a uh, bearish uh, tendency market. Okay, give you our, our performance uh, after all of this bloodbath for our, our favorite guys here that have been working out. So uh, Schlumberger fell off a, a, a little over one percent this week, so we're still up on that trade, twelve point seven percent. Schwab has flattened out. We're still up on that, a half a percent. We'll see what next week we may have to close out of that trade. Uh, CSX come back out of nowhere. All right, so we're up 4.3% overall uh, for that trade. We were almost uh, ready to close that out, so that suddenly we got a rally this week. It was up almost five points, 4.78. And then uh, we did close out of BOK Financial uh, finally this week. I had a gain of uh, about a point and a half over that. I just closed out of that earlier today. So those were our fun trades. Keep you up to date on that. So what we really wanted to talk about this week is deficit spendings and do deficits necessarily lead to higher tax rates? Well, we know from the administration's latest reports that they are going after uh, earners over 400000 okay? Taking away long-term capital gains or, uh, rates for those guys. Um, uh, are going to be taxed at ordinary income changing the tax rate from 37 to 39.6 again and, and, and cutting off, slicing off that bracket about $150,000 and change lower than where it is right now. That's regardless uh, of, uh, you know, uh, of whether or not uh, the Tax Cut Jobs Act of 17 goes away. So they're trying to do that, they're trying to accelerate that, those top brackets now earlier on they're also trying to jump the uh, tax rates globally it's 15 percent minimum uh, corporate tax rate 15 percent they want to jump that rate to 28 percent here in the domestic united states so that's where you at uh, domestically and it's because of the deficit spending and the 30 trillion dollars worth of debt that we have okay and 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 it's exceeding well over a hundred percent of gdp and so that means it's chewing up the large portion of our of our budget uh, annual budget we've got a lot of other programs that have to be paid for okay such as social security medicare medicaid and uh, all these others uh pro interest on the national debt okay these have to be done and then you've got a plethora of other programs of entitlement programs that have to be uh, provided for so let's look at that's the problem and so as, as the question boils down to one of two directions Either the federal government is like a household budget and has to keep its bills paid, or it doesn't. It's a sovereign. It's a king uh, or queen. It's royalty. It's, it's, it's the sovereign, okay? And so in that vein, from that viewpoint, so the classical viewpoint has been what I just said. The federal government's like a household. you got to pay your bills. you got to keep the debt uh, going because you can't just keep running up this credit card forever, okay? or else you have to go what bankrupt uh, can the United States the central bank go bankrupt well the counter availing uh, point of view is for the modern monetarist uh, theory and that is no it's a sovereign it can't it has the ability to print money okay uh, and so 
most of the other big players in the world, and, and, and as far as they're concerned, deficits do not matter. Japan has been doing this experiment for well over 20 years at this point, okay? And keeping interest rates low and just and, and running the deficit. So while the class, classical theory says deficits don't matter, uh, and deficits do matter. You 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 have to pay the bills and 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 balance your 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 budget. The the modern monetarist, this new school of thought, has come in and says no, deficits don't matter. What matters is inflation. All right. So we know that we've been talking about inflation now for over you know a month or so, and 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 that's rampant. So the real critical thing is, how do you pull money back out of the system? The Fed is saying, well, we raise interest rates, but is, how is that going to change the price of food uh, on the shelf, uh, although that's been falling? How is that going to change the price of energy at the pump? Okay, It really doesn't. And so the MMT, Modern Monetary Theorist, looks at this and says, look, you have to use fiscal policy to make and incentivize changes in those industries to bring back um, uh, production such to the point that there's a balance of supply with demand again and there's not a shortage and that way you control inflation on those areas but as far as interest rates keep them low and stimulate the economy until you get full employment that's that's their pit uh, that's their pitch is that everybody's fully employed and when you get inflation going then there's only two ways to get money out of the system for the federal government. Either way that you look at it, okay, I, from either angle, from either the classical viewpoint or the MMT viewpoint, that's by issuing debt, selling bonds, okay, and tax rates. So either way, if you're going, if you're the, from the classical theory, you're going to right the ship by balancing the budget. That means you raise tax rates. Okay, you issue more debt, pull money out of the society in or the economy in order to uh, uh, reduce liquidity, and you raise tax rates at the same time so that you can pay down your deficit balance. Now switch to the other side of the looking glass because this really is kind of Alice in Wonderland looks. The MMT guy says, look, this deficit doesn't matter as long as we keep inflation under control. So right now, inflation's out of control. So the MMT guy says, we're not worried about the size of the deficit, we're worried about the inflation. We have to pull money out of the system. Liquidity, okay? So how do we do that? Well, we issue more government bonds and increasing the debt, right? Uh, stay with me here, but raising taxes primarily, pulling that excess money back out of the system, cooling down the economy that way until inflation becomes under control again and then when the economy needs some help you don't shy away from increasing yet the deficit more by doing more spending or doing what? Borrowing more. They're not afraid of deficits. So the question is do deficits really matter? Well, in Western Europe, they say they're not really that worried about it, and what they're looking at is keeping interest rates low, which is a stimulus to the economy. And in Japan, this has been going on for decades now, they're not worried about it, keeping interest rates low, which is a stimulus to their economy, and just keeping inflation under control. That's the gambit. Either way, if you look at it from the classical viewpoint to say you have to balance the budget, or if you look at it from the MMT on the other side of the looking glass and say it doesn't matter, it's just when inflation gets out of control, you take the money out of the system, you slow down the economy, cool it down by raising taxes. Either direction, when no matter which way you look at it, the solution is from the classical standpoint to lower the bu uh, budget deficit. And to pay your bills, you have to what? Raise taxes. From the other side of the mirror, on the looking glass, from the MMT standpoint, when you've got runaway inflation, and you're not even runaway inflation, just too high inflation, and you need to cool down the economy, you're not worried about the size of the deficit, but you do what to cool down the economy? Raise taxes. So it doesn't matter from which side of the angle you're looking at it, the solution 
for the problem. If you look around right now, and the inflation is what it is, they're going to be looking from a macroeconomic uh, standpoint at raising taxes. All right, this is not bad news, okay? The good news is we still have time because 2030 and 2032, I've given a lot of evidence, okay, that the government is printing constantly. Those are the points of inflection. From 2026, we're starting to deal with it now. In 2022, with the higher tax brackets, in 2026, it's going to change all the tax brackets, and we're going to have until 2030 to 2032 before some major shifts are coming along in terms of dramatically higher tax rates, okay? All right, so we know that we have solutions to these problems. We have the math. We can do the math, we can tell you exactly. Our risk reduction recipe tells you, look, this is how much you do in this year, this is how much you, you shift in this year, this is what you do. We'll give you the, the amounts, okay? Over this next period, we build your plan, it shows you how to avoid all this. So what does that do for you? It gives you certainty and lets you sleep better at night. And when you do that, you can better manage your money and most importantly, you stay happy, okay? And happiness is the key to longevity and a, and, a, and a quality of life. So until next week, reach out to us when we can help you. You know how to, reach, how to get a hold of us. And until then, stay happy.